Hey man, welcome back to another Confusion tutorial. Now after the fusion contest we finally have some time to chill and we do that right inside a black hole. The main purpose of this tutorial is uh, to show you or the most of the new fusion users how to use refraction inside of fusion. Not reflection, refraction. It's like when you look through the glass, right, and you get this distorted uh, view. There's a little confusion out there about how to use it because it's not well documented in the manual. So let's clarify this once and for all. I'm going to demonstrate you that uh, using this black hole scene. So I've prepared my scene here with this space background that I found on the internet. And you can see the lookup table is on. So it means we are we are working with a linear workflow. And what I did here is I changed the footage already to 16-bit float. And I applied the gamma to yeah convert the color space. And let's start now. Um, first, let's bring in all the stuff that we need. So let's drop in a shape 3D. Let's drop in a displace. 3D. Let's drop in a replace material. Let's bring in a background tool. And this background tool we're gonna set to a resolution of 512 by 512. And we're gonna set it to float 16 for now. I wanna show you a little problem we got. And we also need an ellipse mask, which I hook in here. And we need another sphere. This one will be a huge sphere we use for the universe. Let's rename this universe. And this one, black hole. So we got those two objects here and we bring them together using a merge. And now I show you what we have. Here's our plane. So then we need a sphere map tool. Now a sphere map tool basically puts your um, map, your texture onto uh, environment coordinates. And we hook our space in there. And we need materials. So we need a blend material. And without deselecting the material, we need a reflect material. Okay, so, and these of course belong in here, into the replace material. So let's uh, start displacing this thing. So we have this uh, plane and I saw a tutorial about making a black hole in Blender uh, where this guy, uh, he, ch he chose a sphere uh, and then he applied some uh, shaders to it to achieve that look. But in Fusion, it doesn't, unfortunately, it doesn't work uh, with a sphere because you won't get rid of the hard edges that a sphere has. Um, these, we won't be able to blend nicely into the background, into the universe. Um, I came with the idea that to not use a sphere, but to actually use a plane and displace it um, so that we get half a sphere out of it. Or a bump, let me say that. It's probably more a bump. So, I'm gonna view this background tool. Now, this is what we get here. And if I view the displace, you can see nothing happens at the moment. That is because it's set to black. And I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna crank this up to about this this side and you can already see that we need to crank up the subdivisions level and i'm going to choose 512 the same resolution as the map and then i'm going to smooth this ellipse mask something like this and now you can you can control the strength either by adjusting the color here or it right inside the displays um, i choose the background tool here for now yeah so this is basically what you get and here already I, can, I want to show you the problem why you always should use a 32-bit float map uh, for displacement you see it's set to float 16 and you thought it would be enough but actually it's not look what happens if I switch to 32-bit it looks much better now what you see here those leftovers I think it's just a glitch I I, I don't remember having problems with the 32-bit float and as you can see here once I touch the um, the mask and I set it uh, to custom and then back to default, uh, you can see that those artifacts uh, disappeared. 
So with 32-bit float, it should be perfect. But make sure you're in high quality mode. That's very important. So now we got this thing. What are we going to do with this? For now, let's just um, hook our universe into the universe object. We'll do something like this. And also, we're going to use this into the reflect. Hold Alt uh, to get this menu. And then we set it to reflection color. And we get some reflection here. And now the question is, how do we get this refraction here to work? So you might have um, tried this to move this slider, nothing happened. And then you had the idea to use a map uh, to control it, but it also didn't work. And the thing is, to use refraction, of course, we need transparency. We need transparency. We need something, you want to get something like glass, right? So it needs to be transparent. And the reflect shader itself doesn't give you the uh, opacity. So it takes the opacity from whatever comes into the background tool or background slot of the reflect. And in our case, we have a blin. So watch what happens if I put down the opacity. Okay, now it's completely gone. But you can see that something is going on here. Now, if we go into the reflect and we move the slider, you can still see nothing happens, you know, and this is something that drives some uh, some new people nuts. I mean, why is it so difficult? Why is it so difficult to get refraction? Seriously? Well, it's actually super simple, but, but you need to understand one thing that reflections and refractions. <laughs> yeah, my plates. <laughs> ah, funny. Reflections and refractions are environment based. It's not ray tracing what you have here. Uh, therefore, if you take a look, we get the reflection by using this fear map tool. It makes perfect sense that we then also have to use it for the refractions. So watch what happens if I hook this fear map tool into the refraction tint material. Bang! Here we go. Got some perfect glass going on here. Ooh. Okay, it looks like jelly beam. Yeah, so um, this is not too shabby, but now we have a problem. First of all, we have these edges here. We need to get rid of them. And uh, the other problem is that, you see, if I move towards this nebula here, you can see that it's not reflecting or refracting in, uh, in our black hole object. Since we want to make a black hole, I actually want to use this side here. So let's move here to this part of the galaxy. I can additionally just move the, the sphere tool, just so we have it nice and clean in front of it. Okay, but now you can see that the, our black hole object is kind of dark. It doesn't match with the background. Now that is because we have a plane here, and a plane has only one side, it, because this plane doesn't have thickness. So technically it has only one side, it means the normals are facing towards one direction. And in this case, they don't face towards the camera, but away from the camera. So we need to flip them. We can do so by adding a replace normals right after the whole thing, after the whole construction, because see the the universe itself is also basically flipped because it's a sphere and we are inside the sphere. So the normals are basically uh, phasing outwards. So we need to flip this whole thing. So I view this and then I flip normals. And now you can see it gets the right brightness. And you can see that the background almost matches to what is refracting inside the black hole object. Almost. It's not perfect, but as far as we can get here without any custom tools okay but now we need to get rid of the second problem this edge problem here what, what can we do here now this gets a little tricky and you need to be very careful so come closer man closer Ugh. for that we just copy this background tool and ellipse tool and now we're gonna do some advanced stuff here don't be scared it's super advanced Whenever you hear the word Boolean inside of Fusion, you know you're going the hot way. So, first thing I want to do is to define 
a transparency or opacity by a map and remember the opacity was set in this blend material so i take this background tool and let me set this back to black and now don't get confused we want to make the outer parts transparent but don't set your background tool for that like this if you hook this into the blend material you're basically telling the reflect uh, material to make these transparent areas refractive that's not what we want we want the other way around so we need to invert this mask we need to do something like this now by hooking this into the background of the blend um, nothing changes and that is because the blend is still set to opacity of zero so it basically overrides what comes in here so in order to get um, the effect we need to bring this back up uh, usually when you have transparent objects you can put this down to black so now if if you find it difficult to see here you can uh, activate the buffer lut global options buffer lut enable it's a little bit a lot of clicking now but yeah you might not want to use this too often i set this to gamut gamut and then i click edit and i put the output to as rgb and now this thing brightens up now you can see with this map we defined that everything that is inside everything that is transparent will be refracted this won't be um, let's remove the specularity okay now we have this then we make another copy of this construction and this time we want to say we want to control the reflection intensity this doesn't matter too much because we have only a uh, um, glazing strength here we have basically a fresnel reflection going on the face on strength is basically zero so there's not much going on here but we might as well just leave it um most important now is probably to get rid of the black borders here and we do that with a boolean tool don't confuse it with the normal kind of boolean it is the channel boolean 3 bool so and we hook this in between ah uh, sorry after the reflect material and now we hook uh, this background tool inside this channel boolean and now we're gonna say now we're gonna say multiply the alpha background with the alpha foreground this is the alpha foreground and it will be multiplied and now you can see what we get. Okay, it's uh, interesting, but it's still not, uh, it's not a black hole. So let's tweak this a little bit more here. Um, the refraction index is uh, very important in, the, in our case here. So I found that the uh, refraction index of 0 0.8 works best. You get this, uh, really this bump in here. And another very sensitive thing is to actually get the radius of these masks right. So at the moment it doesn't look like it uh, actually warps the space around it. And we can see by tweaking this ellipse mask here. This is the displace ellipse mask. And now let's also tweak this one here not too much otherwise you get these dark areas here so it was this ellipse mask inside the bl blin uh, that goes into the blin we can also try to bring the softness a little bit back okay it's not too bad now the problem we have is we still have this little offset and the solution for that would be a custom reflect shader which unfortunately I'm not able to make because I don't have any programming skills. Um, but what we would need is a refraction index control through a map. So we could say that everything that is on this area has a refraction index of 1 because see when I set this to 1 basically there is no refraction and this is what we need and then we could create a smooth fall off inside so we get uh, slowly we would get this refraction uh, effect okay but for now i think this is cool the next thing we want to do is of course this is a black hole so we need to make this thing black yeah, it needs to be black it needs to be black and again we use another boolean tool and this time just copy the background tool and I hook this in here 
And now we set the alpha again back to A. And this time we want to multiply a color. We want to make a gradient that becomes darker towards the center of the black hole. And then we multiply this on top. Think of it like a 2D multiplier, like in Photoshop or whatever. It's just in 3D space on a material base. So let's create a gradient here. We switch to this gradient and then we switch to radial. And I'm going to put this in the center. And you can uh, do this by typing in here. Start 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now this thing is perfectly centered. And what we do now in this second Boolean tool, we multiply the RGB channels. And the same here, A multiply B. Oops, A multiply B. A multiply B. And bang, there you go. The black hole is becoming black. So let's adjust the gradient here a little bit. I want to make this really dark in there, something like this maybe. And we also pull the white inside, something like this. And there you go. You've created yourself a black hole in 3D space. I might ask, hey Vito, but what am I going to do with this tutorial? When do I have to create a black hole? Well, you don't have to create a black hole, but you can create all kinds of uh, interesting effects with this, you know. I mean, you don't have to only use a space background. You can also use uh, like a, a different background, you know, and you can use different displace maps. You can animate those maps, you know, and um, important is that you understand the, the tools and then the way you combine them is totally up to you, man. So my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Yeah.